is Tobias Reis. I'm working for Xebo, a Munich based company, and uh, very focused on JavaScript. And today I'd like to ask the question how do you test? And I have another question how can JavaScript benefit from a community <coughs> that tests? So, how do you test? I uh, I assume every one of us is testing actually, so um, either with your debugger for Node or on your, uh, within your browser, that is definitely testing, that's no, no doubt. But um, testing through debugger is, is not very efficient. I mean, that's the point if that's your only test. And today I'd like to discuss some test strategies that are not always just uh, not automated like like uh, the debugger <coughs> console. Um, that's I think is one of the main problems if you, if the debugging console is your only test, because the test is your secret. So everyone else in your team is forced to call you somehow if you are on the holidays, <coughs> and that's a big issue I guess for everyone of us. And uh, it doesn't fit probably in, in any deployment pipeline. No one ever would open a console uh, shortly before he wants to uh, deploy something just to test everything. No. So choose an efficient mix of tests. So that of course depends on your use case. There is no one final solution I'm going to present today, definitely not. But you should know your friends. Who are your friends? Those are some of your friends. And I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I try to grasp at least three of them, and those are the unit test, integration test, and functional test. And, well, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are people in this room who, who might think, but who don't share my opinion about um, functional tests, who don't share. Uh, what I think about functional tests, maybe um, they think it's something completely different. Um, that's okay and fair, uh, and I, I would be happy if you talk about it afterwards. And if you don't interrupt me while I'm speaking right now. Um, so how do we, how can we measure what test is good for for us? And if I say us, I'd like to split in two groups. So those um, developers, I call them developers, who do, uh, they have a daily workflow and they should use a kind of test and those who are called Q&A, um, those um, should have another kind of test. So, let's uh, go to the first part of mine. So, that means um, you as a developer, should have execute should be able to execute the test very fast, whereby um, slow executing slow uh, the test very slow is something a QA can do, but that's not for your daily workflow. The second one is, I would like to run my test automatically and not manual. And the third one is, I'd like to test only a small unit and not the whole system, because testing the whole system can be very complex. So as I said, I tried to split them up. So slow, manual, and complex. Um, I'd like to address those kind of tests to the QA. And fast, automatic, and unit-based, or module, <coughs> we're just focus on the module. I'd like to address to the devs. And of course, it depends on uh, uh, the resources you have within your company, it's sometimes you as a developer, um, you are not just a developer, you are also the QA. That of course can happen, but there are projects where I completely <coughs> split up those tasks. <coughs> That's just a summary of what I've said. So, test that executes fast, run automatically, are, and a focus on simplicity fits best to your daily workflow, and all other tests happen just once a day or less often. So what is a uh, unbalanced test strategy? 
I, I, I picked that picture because um, from the outside it looks very cool that house. It has, uh, it has a door, it has windows, everything is there. So, but the internals might not be finished yet. So, make sure by choosing the right test strategy that you come from both sides, from the unit and the system. If you choose, if you pick just one of them, you might have problems, uh, and you run into those situations where you, uh, where people complaining about uh, um, finding a bug. Then it was fixed, and then they found the bug again, and then it was fixed. And you ask yourself, how can I get around the problem? And that's a good strategy to come from both sides. Um, other problem is if you just go always with the same tools. And if you try to uh, use that tool every time for all your problems. Because obviously there are different tools to test units and different tools to test the system. I don't know of any tools that try to do everything. And if they exist, they might fail. For example, multi -tool. Sorry? I use my multi tool. It has a screwdriver and. Cool. <laughs> so that's a fair point. Knife. <coughs> yeah. Or like, for example, a Swiss Army knife. It's also, also a very good multi tool. <laughs> That's a cool. A lot of things. If you're serious right now, then uh, we can talk <laughs> about it afterwards. Okay. Um, the third point is check your skills. Because if you always do the same stuff, um, you might stuck in what you're doing. So practice. Practice because sometimes you just. Um, you don't just don't have the use cases uh, in your daily workflow. It just happened because you have a project that's very successful and you do it for years. But um, like you, you do practicing for other stuff as well. If you go, do, are you doing sports? Well, if you would do sport, then uh, <laughs> you practice. Right? So it's the same for coding. You should practice coding, and you should start doing it today. Because finding the right test strategy takes years. You get used to it, you get used to uh, all your friends, as I said before, you get used to unit tests, what is a functional test, what is an integration test. But it takes time. So start today. So in the news, um, I saw this I saw this one, and obviously you can tackle the problem from a lot of sides. Like, why is your editor not screaming and, and stuff like that? But, um, but today I'd like to talk about tests and what is missing here is a unit test. Just testing that function. And you would immediately see that there's something totally wrong. And I hope you see it as well. Curl braces are missing. You never come to the next line. You never come here. You always go to fail. So that's important about unit tests. And I wonder uh, what, what test strategy exists uh, within Apple. Unit tests. Unit tests are a small part of your big system of your app. Every unit has an API. Make sure to only to test the API don't test the implementation. I'll tell you why in a short. And if you create a test, make, make it the ideal world. Test only the API, and fake the rest. What is the rest? So first, test the API, not the implementation. Your small unit still has kind of a communication to the other units within your app. I just picked three times of a uh, very uh, obvious and familiar API calls, like you uh, communicate to each other, create object, and return an object. The second one is just getter, and, and the third one is a setter. This is your API. This is the way you communicate 
with the rest of the API. This is your contract with the rest of the API. Means the rest of the API assumes that that stuff is working. And assuming that <coughs> is great because now you have better tests because you don't have to use the rest of the API, uh, the rest of the uh, modules within your app or external stuff. But I'll come to that one later. Let's, let's stay here and talk about your API. And the cool stuff about testing just the API right now is that you actually documented what the API is supposed to do. And it let, let others read your mind. Why is it so? Well, it's, it's so because if you have a look at your tests, you can see what you thought while developing. So even if you did it wrong or not as expected, it's obvious when you see the test and you can fix it and nobody has to call you when you're on holidays. Don't leak internals. Why? Because if you don't test internal stuff, you can touch the internal stuff without touching the tests. You can, rem you can remove stuff, you can uh, make it nicer, you can change it regarding performance, regarding whatever, but you can change the internals of your module and you can just run the test and the test make sure that the API is working as expected. Let's talk about the ideal world. And, and as I said, you have you have contract. You have a contract to the modules within your app, and um, and you are using other modules that also share contact contract. And those kind of contracts are allowed um, to fake within your unit test. So you don't have to really wait for seconds if you use a timer. You don't have, you don't have to ha uh, even have a network connection if you, if you test your external service in the cloud. You just don't need that stuff because every, uh, because all the services and also the timer, they all have an API and those API can completely mock if you didn't wrote it or spied in uh, such cases where they are also part of your app. And mock and spy, that's are just uh, well terms to to split to split uh, those different use cases. And I'm sure there are people who are mixing them up all the time, uh, maybe even on purpose because they don't like so different terms. There, you can say fake, spy, mock, whatever. But the idea is always the same. Make it possible that you can run your unit test super fast by faking your external dependencies. What's the exact difference between uh, a mock and a spy? So if you have, um, if you already have the module, the complete, <laughs> complete model because it is within your repository, you um, uh, so I know you the import it. Yeah, you import it within your test because it is there and then and then you spy it means you override the existing functionality but that's in contrast to mock where you don't even need the source code of the external dependency you don't need the real API of your cloud service you don't read the real timer you can you know the API so you can create your own object that has the same API and just use them at the end. Um, uh, pe people mixing it up because at the end you have then you have then the uh, a mock and then you spy on the mock again. Um, so that's 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 the point. But but I think it's very it's uh, the most important point is that you fake all the dependencies because if you fake all the dependencies, you don't rely that the services. Uh, online, you can just run your test automatically. 
um, and you can run it very fast because no dependencies, no real timer. So now let's talk about integration tests and I'm just talking about one use case of integration tests. An uh, integration test tries to test um, the next level of unit test means you have two modules, everyone has its own unit test and now one module talks to the other. Those tests are not covered by unit tests, right? So the integration test now tries to test the communication between modules. And one use case I like very much is if you, uh, if you don't have an existing library that, let's say, ships all the DOM like you want. So you're using jQuery and jQuery just uh, don't really, they don't care about the um, HTML media element. So you use the HTML media API and now uh, you notice that it's not working properly on all devices, it's not working properly on all different browsers, some property might not work in Firefox and the other one might not work in Chrome, whatever, and you uh, ending up uh, trying to shim that uh, API by introducing new API. <coughs> And, and then you make the mistake and coupling your shim too much with your application. And now you have a problem, let's say you have a problem that just happens on one browser. Now because those things are too much coupled, you need to run your whole application on that browser. Okay, that's, that can, uh, we can find a solution for that. And the solution is you create a very thin abstraction layer of, for example, the HTML uh, media element that is not coupled to your application. You can even reuse it for completely different um, applications and completely different projects. The same goes for services uh, in the cloud. You create a very thin um, abstraction layer and you only test the abstraction layer together with the real service and together with the real DOM on that particular environment. Or on all environments you want to support for your application. Um, those tests are often automated. Often means um, it would be very good if they are automated, but um, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to automate uh, every test, so you end up running uh, those tests manually. It depends. They're slow, of course, because you need the real, the real service. But it can those tests can run independently from your daily workflow. Of course, that's that's the point of having those integration tests. And. And now the big advantage is of having such an abstraction layer is within your unit, you just use the API of the abstraction layer, that's a spy or a mock, whatever, and uh, you can run your unit test again super fast because the abstraction layer is the, is the ideal world um, that is supposed to run everywhere. Yeah, that way you can avoid environment dependent regressions because if you have a problem just in one environment, you write a test for that particular environment and just for the abstraction there, not for the whole <coughs> application. And what's also um, tricky about that is now you have your abstraction layer and you have your, your integration test for, those, for, the, for the abstraction layer. And, and now there's, let's say, iOS 8 and you want to test do I really, can, can I support that new environment out of the box? Well, I just run those integration tests on that new box and then I can make sure every, everything is going uh, to be working. So, let's come back to the news. Um, Apple did a great job by fixing the the, the, the critical security bug 
and well they already had uh, a new version in the pipeline and now they needed to release that very fast and they did and boom um, there might be some problems now if you have a multi-screen setup or airplay problems occur something like that so how can we test that and that's what I said that can you can test it very good if you test your whole application functional tests so you did all of the small pieces within the car you you put them all together and now you have a car and now you test the whole car and you you don't care about the internals you just want to you just want that the car works that's often manual uh, because it's very complex as you see here that's very complex you should definitely do it before you hand out the stuff um, before deployment it's super time consuming but it very it verifies if the software meets the requirements <coughs> so that's one test strategy just one a possible efficient mix of tests I choose the unit test for the developer for the for a steady workflow because they run very fast and you can refactor <coughs> daily you can always be sure that everything is fine we can focus on features and not regressions and that test strategy fits perfectly in your deployment or any de deployment pipeline consider uh, unit tests to be executed all the time integration tests if automated uh, maybe they're just executed whenever you you merge something into your main repository and functional tests are executed before you deploy um, Tobias can you ask the audience this question <laughs> yes sure I don't really know functional testing, but what's the difference between functional and E2E testing at the end? And what? Uh, E2E testing. End to end? Yeah, end to end, yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, it can happen that it's the same if, if you end to end test, test the whole application. Or if you have a bunch of end to end tests, it ends up being also like your functional tests. Um, End-to-end -end just means that you uh, check, for example, let's, let's, let's talk about UI. Check the input, <coughs> then you maybe open your debugger, you check if all the variables are correct, and you check, does it do the request? Can I see the entry in the database? So, end-to-end. -end. And uh, that's... But I want to ask the audience how you are testing at the moment. Can you please raise your hand up if you are doing tests? Generally? Okay, functional? Integration? <laughs> right, same like functional. And unit tests? Okay, and who of you guys doing test driven development? Like in the book? Yeah, what's that? Okay, thanks. Uh, but it's interesting to see that uh, a lot of people here are already using that test strategy because, well, um, I can see unit and functional <coughs> that goes very well because, well, unit is your daily workflow and functional you do that shortly before you deploy. You check, oh, okay, that's my, that's my, is my app working? But integration test, um, I wouldn't have expected so many people do that already. Yes. We even do design test. We compare. Sure. Uh, we create a screenshot yeah. during the end to end test, and then we have a problem which com which uh, detects the changes between browser and during design. Yeah, there are a lot of different <laughs> ways to test, and as I said, design test absolutely makes sense if you have great UI. That makes sense. Also, performance tests um, make totally sense. So. I'd like to ask 
uh, now the, the second question, how can JavaScript benefit of, uh, of you when you test? And, well, let's look at the news. And um, there's a new editor from GitHub. And they claim, can you read it? And they claim that um, because Node.js is integrated, um, you can choose from 50,000 Node packages right now today, all of them. Great. That's awesome. So um, we are all very proud of the amount of libraries we have, right? And we need that because they allow for easier development. But choose wisely because maybe your app ends up being like that. There are so many libraries out there, they're not tested, they're not working. Um, you really need to take care of what you pick. So 50,000 is a great number, but that's not the reality. It's really not the reality. But we have also very good examples where, where um, <coughs> testing works very well. And I'd like to pick some of them. AngularJS is one of them. They even have pre-bundled mocks. So that means for me, that I didn't use uh, AngularJS in that regard, but um, for me that means you have a very uh, lightweight way to add the existing API from <coughs> AngularJS and just test it without running on every machine, without running on every browser because they make sure that um, everything is working on every browser because they provide the tests. And what does it mean? It means quality, and quality means trust. So by adding tests, you actually increase the, the, the amount of quality and trustability to your library. That's, that's really cool. And if you don't test, you're actually forcing others to test. Namely, the people who want to use your library. They can't trust you. If you have a new release, might be that there's everything broken. Also, those libraries are very inspiring. Because we want to use the library and we see new ways. We see something's happening. Those libraries now provide mocks. That's also uh, just happened lately that React um, added add-ons, the test utils, also that they, they provide uh, utilities and uh, they provide mocks to test the components of React. <coughs> and by that they encourage people to test and what's really interesting is if they provide all the tests in their repository, we have the same um, feature we rely on for years and that's use source code and we can see what did they test, how do they test and we can maybe copy it, at least you can discuss it. And this should be a normal workflow. If you have a fix for your own library or if you want to help another uh, developer by providing a fix for his library, you should definitely not just uh, put the, the fix within the pull request but also the test. And that <coughs> does the following. It proves your word. That's the first thing. So the developer don't have to check all the time. Does it make sense what he, what he did? So, ah, there's a test. Obvious, obviously, there was something wrong. I have uh, a super small, uh, if it's a unit test, I have a, a, a super small proof um, of mm -hmm. that bug. And that's really easy to review. Another way, and we, we just talked about it. A great example, top code from Adobe CSS uh, uh, library. They have performance tests on all their components. They run it on Nexus 4 and all uh, different Android devices and Chrome for it's not that they only would run it on Chrome, but the uh, Google is, uh, they are the only ones who provide the tools to measure that. So that's the reason why they're 
only targeting Chrome and Android and, and stuff where RepKit is running on. But that's great. That's that makes yourself responsible for every deployment you, you do. Whenever you deploy, people can have a look at the chart and they can see, okay, you're now getting faster or slower, whatever, it's, that's called uh, product transparency. And um, that's how I like it. So, what if you don't have tests? Yeah. I mean, I would call this a prototype. And that's fine. We need those libraries too. But make it clear that your library is a prototype. And don't add them to package managers. Because it's a prototype. Also cool, external audits of your package. Um, this project is, I think, not really released yet. Um, I don't think that they started auditing modules. They try to audit every single module in NPM. That's really hard. But whatever, it, it, the idea is that you have an independent analysis of your module and maybe also get a certificate for your package. And that's great because then we, we slowly start to measure on a new factor and the factor is testing. We don't do that right now. In the news, I, I just found this thing in my garden and um, so how does that depend to JavaScript? But it, it, it does. Uh, JavaScript is entering new markets <coughs> and that's JavaScript is running on hardware and that's the real world and you can't just refresh and deploy a new version. You need to make sure that the thing you just released is right. Also running when you don't when you're not connected to the internet all the time. That's hard. But what you actually have now is a lot of power. And with great power yeah, comes great responsibility. And that's why testing gets even more important. So what new markets I'm talking about? I'm talking about microcontrollers. You have one, right? Yes. Cool. Anybody else have such a microcontroller yet? Talking about drones and robots. And there's even more, of course. And it doesn't stop, I guess. And you can't read it, but the point is um, <laughs> Twitter is searching for new developers. And, and they say, we are huge fans of TDD. And that's for a reason. So testing is in demand. And good people make JavaScript attractive. And people who test, well, that's what I'm saying. People who test are good people, and of course. And uh, we should all shape our skills. So how can we do that? How can we shape our skills? So first of all, discuss and talk about the test strategy and we can do that today. That's why we meet. So Munich Jazz is a perfect place. We from Oxibo thought, okay, there's there are even some holes and that's the first um, we, we just recently run the first try of a uh, JavaScript code retreat where you can practice your coding and maybe Wolfram, do you want to um, say something about it? Or we'll go into detail later. Uh, later. Okay, perfect. So what you can see on the picture is people are really tackling new problems, problems they don't have uh, in their daily workflow. They talk with 
others about their testing strategy to try to learn from each other. And this was in Munich, the joke in cool cheese. That was in Munich, like, uh, by the way. Um, yes, <coughs> and Wolfram will tell you when the next meeting um, uh, is going to happen. And the next one is, now that you have your unit mm -hmm. test, you talk, of course, with your, with, uh, uh, with your colleagues about it. But after some time, you notice, okay, my colleagues are cool, but I'd like to talk with others as well. And how can I do that? And it would be really nice if we could share our small problems, our small unit tests, maybe already have a solution, online with others. And we from Xibu created tddbin.com, where, where you can share your test experience, where is whole setup is already done, you can start writing your test immediately and you can uh, record your stuff, well, what from we going to teach you about that. So, two new products from Xibu um, that are only related to testing because we think testing is super serious and yeah, thank you very much and I'm happy to talk with you afterwards about your testing strategy.